Um, All righty. Yeah, these. Yeah, I don't know. I like these movies. Uh, who wants to start? I will start, um, and I'll start with a simple observation that this goes on a pile of movies for me, which is movies that I think are very well made. I didn't enjoy watching at all, not because <laughs> of not because of anything having to do with like the quality of the movie in in the slightest. It it was just unpleasant viewing, and I will never watch this again. But it's very well made. It's well acted. It's well directed. Um, it's it in some places is startlingly beautiful. In most places is utterly horrifying. And uh, it I think it does what it says on the label. Um, we can definitely get into some more nuanced discussion about like racial representation in the movie and stuff like that. But like, it's good. I'm just literally never, ever, ever going to watch this again, ever. <laughs> yeah uh, this is my, this is my second time second or third time seeing it if i'd seen this the year it came out i probably would have put this in my top 10 list it, it was definitely on the top of my list and i also think i also think uh aisling francosi gave the best actress performance of the year and of course she was not recognized at all no yeah because it it's good. an australian film phenomenal yeah, she was very good and um this again they're talking about an obscure time in history like 1820 i think it was in tasmania 1825 yeah. 1825 but anyway you're down in the down the this is just before the uh there was an, an aboriginal uprising in that's in that island a couple well, years this after. Is actually during what's called the black war the black war that's what i'm thinking about it, it's, but man, it's called the tasmanian war yeah you don't it call was, it the black war if you want to see something you've never seen before it, it's nailed it if you want to see like a good uh, representation of what attitudes were like back then about everything, about women, about uh, colonialism, about, you know, indentured servitude and, 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 you know, penal colonies and all that stuff. It really did a great job. Um, even the nature of whiteness, because even white, even, yes. the Irish, the Irish aren't white to mm -hmm. the, to the British. Right. They absolutely aren't. And uh, yeah, it's another foreign thing and an alien thing. And it was just wonderfully handled. And, and I said before, and tonight I'm in scope for a reason, uh, but uh, they did that. It was in four by three. And that I'm was- I'm not it, sure why. Okay, here's my thinking. Um, I thought about this because it was like, it really surprised me because it was all shot digital. It was all shot with an area and he had to go through some effort to get the, to cut the sides off to make it work, right? But you widen the screen like this, say that this is a, hold on, let me change my background here a little bit. Um, you, uh, um, I actually got one from the movie. Uh, if I can find it, it's sad. It's probably missing, and there it is. And it's not here. Yay! I feel like an idiot. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, but if it's when you when you have a frame like this and you have this much background, you're going to concentrate on this person's place in nature. There's going to be a lot of trees. You're going to be surround them. They're going. It's going to be like this. So much background that they seem smaller and less capable. The people are overwhelmed by nature in like Lawrence of Arabia. You know, because it's so wide, you're more, you're watching the grandness and the, the you know the desolation. Right, there's figures one, in a landscape. Yeah, this one narrows it to four by three, so you concentrate on the characters. It's, it's like everything. how in First Man, the whole everything up until he steps off of the lunar lander, is is all like lower res and like yeah. tight in and all of that. And as soon as he steps off the lander and he's on the oh, moon. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in 4K and oh, no. it goes from Super 35 to to uh, IMAX. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's really it's, amazing. <laughs> and 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 that's one of those things where it's like you are overwhelmed by nature in that. Yeah. And this movie wants the opposite. It, it wants was, you to it, be well, yeah. underwhelmed was, by nature. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is oh. not be this is not beautiful. Yeah, this well, is a very it's a very know. human I, story. I was fascinated by the scenery when they were yeah. in the no, it I was. I know what. Like that. I, I had no idea what Tasmania looked like. The last time yeah. I saw Tasmania in a movie was that Yahoo Serious film back in the eighties. Yeah, Remember that one. No, this <laughs> was like, wow, it looks like this looks like that friggin' planet from Avatar. Yeah, well said. <laughs> exactly right. There's palm yeah. trees. Okay, what are they doing really there? Remarkably different than anything I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, great. It it's a basically a rainforest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. And, yeah. And unfortunately, you know, you guys, I, I sent that article out last yesterday about the- uh, I don't media. know if I agree with you on that one. Yeah, I don't think it, it, it quite it, 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 it is, it is, come on. No, because okay, so, unlike no. most of oh, the we're characters- Oh, we're young now, right. that, you, that, the, the trope that that, that, that paint, that, that, what, most of the movies that get painted with that trope, unlike, 
This guy had skin in the game in ways that those other characters in those other movies did not. Well, yeah, I also want to I, 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 I want to bring up something just in terms about like native representation and stuff, and that is, and I was saying this before um, you guys got here to Jim, but like the one of the big differences here is that what you see a lot in in modern stuff using native representation especially in america is you have people who are either mixed race and they're like native part of their race sort of takes over and like makes them good at some earthy thing mm -hmm. and then also um or you have somebody who is is decently far away from that tradition in terms of just time like they've been displaced from their land they've been put on a reservation they've been westernized in a lot of ways and they can sort of like almost and, and i'm putting the biggest quotes around this go feral on something where they're just like all of a sudden this guy who basically grew up in a city can track you know like he can sniff the ground and know that a plane crashed here mm -hmm. like that that kind of thing this isn't like that this is the colonization started in 1803 this is 22 years later this guy was hunting on this land up until yesterday like it, it, it's one of those things where like just because he he knows English, he still has a much deeper connection. So when he says things like, oh, I can I can make, you know, I can make something from this that makes you feel less pain or I know this is food or I can follow this path or whatever. He's not magic. He's a man who had to live like that up until he got co-opted by this fucked up system. I I get I get Scott's point, though, I I. I think I take both points because I don't see this as I don't see this film as exploitative in that sense, mm -hmm. but I do see elements of that trope, I guess. So yeah. it didn't hit me that way when I first saw it. I, I got to see this at Sundance two years ago mm -hmm. and, and Jennifer Kent was there and then the, oh. and, and, and the actress was there. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Uh, I would say if you're going to, if you're going to invoke the, the magic Negro trope, that's to me a character who doesn't have any internal story or backstory or like Chris said, skin in the game. It's like someone who floats down in a bubble like, like Glinda of Oz to do something for the main character to bring but, a magic. But, but that's exactly what he does. Or, or he, well, he's I, there he to help this. He's his held at gunpoint. He's yeah, forced he to do he this. Does, yeah, in the beginning. But after a while, they find their coalition. They work right, but, but they didn't find coalition. It's, it's, I'm not saying a magic, a, a magic Negro doesn't necessarily mean he's actually magic. No, I know. It means he's capable. It means that this person has needs. The thing is, but he's also in this film consuming his personal desires for hers, and it happens over and over again. Except he, he could doesn't. Have walked because, the fuck away anytime he wanted to. Except and he didn't. Except he doesn't because they keep giving him reasons not to. Correct. Like, like the, he keeps finding he reasons not to. Him, killing his uncle. And 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 they're also they're also genuinely bonding. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is yeah. which is maybe something maybe outside. something weaker movies try to do. Mm -hmm. Um. But but to lesser effect. The best scene in this movie, in my opinion, is the one where she kills the guy in the after he's been had his leg fucked up and then she shoots him in the other leg. And he's standing there and he sees her do that and he's like, fuck you, I'm out. Yeah, like I'm good, literally yeah. like you're you're just as bad as the rest of them. Like mm -hmm. I kind of liked you and I just watched you do that to this guy. I'm done. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not part of this anymore. And she keeps begging him, and that's when she switches to using his name, which I think is good because that's what actually makes him stop and turn around and look at her and take that oh, second oh, to go this isn't your husband your child is dead yeah and now he understands that she has a very similar pain and that similarity of pain and his loss, and again, just look at what it says above my head. By the end of this, there were a hundred natives left. They started out between four and five thousand, and there were a hundred left by the time of the end of this war. So at least a thousand people died, a thousand natives died during this war. Maybe more, maybe less. We're not a hundred percent sure. But the literally, like, there's no one. He doesn't have anyone. Like he's never going to have anyone again. Yeah. 
she doesn't have anyone they are lost and abandoned in this world and the only thing they have left is their vengeance and he basically gets told by the 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 guys that are eventually get shot in front of him like your town is gone yeah your tribe is gone yeah you're the last one like they've already killed his his only apparently close relative and his town is now he's he's got nobody right so they bonded like like you know god i was like god please don't let this play turn into a romance thankfully it never did she you know she's a better filmmaker than that i thought their bond it never felt contrived to me it totally felt genuine and, they, bond, uh, they bonded over different levels of vengeance yes uh, yeah, yeah right. vengeance and, is all they had left yeah and, but, they, and, but they, they were different pain. but lost. they had different, well, they, they they lost, had different goals exactly their their tortured pasts yeah also but a one, one was personal one was like a, a, almost a political it's almost like a, a, a genocidal you know. it is a genocide yeah exactly it's a genocide this is the beginning of a genocide mm -hmm. and the you know the director at sundance pointed out that you know this is this specific you know because she's australian um but you know this this happened everywhere mm -hmm. oh yeah this, this story happened in most countries and you know she she wanted to comment on that as well you know mm -hmm. that that this this happened everywhere and she everywhere. met with several ten uh tasmanian aboriginal groups to talk about like what proper visions of the violence that was inflicted on them was like yeah like they 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 had creative input into the the making of this and said that this properly represents the violence and the horror that occurred like the, one of the things that this movie doesn't touch on at all but that's also a big thing in this is at one point male colonists and prisoners in in tasmania um were 16 to 1 to females Ooh. so <laughs> so like, that explains the first act yes yeah. rape was constant common and accepted yeah that was that was brutal yeah uh -huh. uh, speaking of brutal i mean that was that's definitely one of the hardest to watch movies i mean i've seen a lot of movies with violence in it and violence can affect you how much it affects you varies a lot depending on the context and how it's depicted yeah and and that this was one of the most in that respect it was one of the most disturbing no, yeah. Guys, it was it was, it was personal and psychologically damaging watching that yeah yeah but but sorry guys, chris chris what? the palm is the casualties of war yeah yeah close to that close to that yeah <laughs> but uh yeah it was it was tough you, see, was you guys watch did you guys watch the end of the credits that that language that the aboriginals were yeah. speaking it has me it died out yep it actually, actually they, 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 had, record, they had to re reconstruct it and teach everyone how to speak it to start to do it over again that was that's terrifying i mean i that's, know the uh the the guy who was in charge of that, Dixon, mm -hmm. uh, is a famous uh, Australian linguist. He's been working with Aboriginal languages most of wow. his career. So yeah. also the guy that played Billy, uh, this was his first acting gig. He's a dancer. Uh, wow. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. A fine job. Wow. He's like a, a hip, like I don't even know what he calls him, hip-hop dancer, Jared. I mean, that's what it looked like to me. Is that what he is? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah, I, so I agree with everybody. Sorry. Go ahead, Jared. No, no, I, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think I agree with Tad on, on everything. And, and I, I think everybody's, the consensus is the movie's good. And, very and good, it, yes. it's very well made mm -hmm. and very well uh, shot and the performances and et cetera. It made you think so I'm it. critiquing it on a different level than a lot of the movies that we've been talking about lately. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. these are more like nitpicks over film that I agree is, is good. But I felt like the characters were a little one-dimensional. I mean, yes. the the uh, the lieutenant was pure evil. There was no other, no other aspect to this guy except that he was evil. Right. And I kind of felt like um, what was the Aboriginal character's name? Billy. 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 Mm -hmm. I felt he felt a little too contemporary to me in some points. It just was a little too good to be true. Almost the things he said were so representative of the history of my people rather than his personal experience. He kind of talked politically a lot, which is interesting. Yeah, it was just a bit too much. It was a bit too perfect. Like I got everything in that I wanted to say, you know? Well, he'd that probably, kind of I mean, if you want to draw a backstory for this character, he'd probably been what would be considered at the time a terrorist. Like these people were raiding farms. These people were killing people. Like they were doing it because 
literally their lives were being destroyed. They'd cleared all this land to hunt kangaroos. And then the, the white settlers came in, started shooting them and hurting them and putting them in, in camps. There were, there were concentration camps here. And then, and then just took their land and started grazing sheep and cattle on it. I, so, I, I see what you're saying, John. I, um, and I, I don't know if I disagree. I just think that the, I think the direction is so, confident and sensitive and i think that the performances are just uniformly like even even that officer um there, there, there's something about his performance that yeah maybe i wish they would have written a little more for him but he i don't know that i'm really taken with his performance i just thought he was tremendous like you get his entire motivation and his entire backstory in one sentence in the beginning like yeah. i was i was told i was going to be here for a year and then i would right. get promoted and i've been right. here for three years and i want out yeah and maybe it's the case of that he did more with what was on the page than what was actually there i don't know no the british characters were british people they thought in british ways they were uh, they were part of that far away civilization everything they did there they didn't give a fuck about what they did there because all they're thinking about how they're going to reward it and go back home and spend their money he just shoots that kid oh. in the face he's yeah. just like you annoy me bam yeah. nothing right. matters to them in tasmania is this this oh. isn't their fucking job basically how, how slimy was his second officer though oh, the, the guy worst. from uh he played charlie manson twice yeah yeah that guy that that's the guy Oh, yeah, the sergeant? Charlie oh. Manson in, yeah. in Mind Hunters and the and in Once Upon a Time. In oh Hollywood. my God, I didn't um, recognize him. Jesus oh, Christ! From, he, he was really good in Justified. He yes, was very, he's so good in Justified. He is great, Charlie Manson. No one ever. Dewey he fucking Cox. Dewey, Dewey. He's, he's also great in uh, Mister In Between. He's got a good role in that. Also, yes, the, he is. Yes, the, Chris, he is. The, the scene Chris has up right now, the very end of the film. I w I was waiting for like that explosion from the Death Star to just get bigger and bigger and wipe him out. <laughs> definitely an influence of rogue one in this thing i'm sorry <laughs> but there was there was something oddly uplifting about that ending yeah in, in, in a very uh, weird way because he's probably gonna bleed out about five minutes after the camera oh yeah he's rolling. he's dying he's dying but he's done man and, and, and yeah, the well, way they but i don't know the way they worked gone. her singing in was, yeah. was beautiful i thought but right. sorry, his pain's gone yeah and, and i felt um a, a sigh of relief i i said oh thank god they're the ocean because we had been trapped in those trees and those ferns in that four by three box for yeah, so long yeah that when yeah. i saw the ocean i was like oh. yeah surprised you, it you could breathe you could breathe point, right? except i had a <laughs> but, um, sneaking suspicion that they were going to see the uh, statue of liberty for <laughs> <laughs> but was actually going by what john said it's fun to watch uh, it went fun, but interesting to watch the the terrain change as the film went on. It went yeah, from yeah, yeah, like a yeah. like a sheep herding area to like the the woods and deeper woods and the mountaintops, and it's then been a motherfucker yeah, shoot. suburban Launston, and oh, that was just interesting. You know, it was just I, I, that kind of made it feel real because if you went through some place that was never seen the Axman's Mark, you'd see something like that. You know, and it was good to see that older couple that you know gave them a bit of hospitality to so that you you're not in a world where everyone is shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, that other that. couple got wiped out. He went to their farm and they were fucking dead. What's the hell with that one all about? They're, yeah, casualties uh, of war. I guess. Yeah. Jesus. Or maybe Christ. suicides. I don't know. No, they were like they were too bloody was, for the uh, in bed. No, they probably. I got think the Aborigines killed them. Yeah. yeah. No, but, and that was again. That was common. Like, yeah. like you, these people's land got stolen. Their their livelihoods, their lives, their yeah. bodies got stolen and traded. Yeah, I mean, this is you know, we could make this movie about the Native Americans in our country, yeah. like easy, like, easily. Well, easily. kind of yes and no, but yeah. <laughs> I doubt it was much easier on that. Yeah, I will say I was happy that this turned out to be really good because Baba Duke was phenomenally good, and I didn't want her to be like a you know fluke. Obviously, yeah. wonder. <laughs> no, I, I, will, I, I thank I will you, say, Chris. I will say that I think the best directed part of these was the um, was the dream sequences, hmm. and it does make me feel like I think she should be she should go back to horror, like she should do some more horror because there's like there aren't very many good horror directors. That's true, but I don't know many people who can. I mean that that first act of the film that's just so horrific. Um, I thought it was so brilliantly directed because it doesn't feel because if you really think about it, it's almost like you don't see anything, but you feel everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well she said. doesn't have to show you 
you see no skin, you see no penetrate. Right. You like you don't see a thing, but you feel like it's the most graphic, horribly disturbing thing you've ever seen. And it and, and it is. But and I think that takes a real I don't know. I think she's a really special filmmaker. And I mean, as disturbing as this is, um, I it, it, it stayed with me. It was definitely one of my favorite films oh, of the course. festival. And, and oh. yeah, but the thing and is, I, I, thought- I, I, I agree with Chris. I'm like, when when I saw this, I was like, okay, she 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 is she is here to play. Like she is yeah. here to. She's a real filmmaker. She is, you know, just making her mark one after another. Like I can't wait to see what she does next. And I don't even care what genre she tackles. This movie reminded me of Ty like, Walkabout, uh, little The Revenant, Straw Dogs. The Revenant. I got a strong Revenant vibe off this. Yeah. One. Um, I uh, spit on your grave. I mean, like there was. Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. I yeah. it was great. definitely informed by sort of cheaper horror flicks yeah. i thought yeah. well and it doesn't have the revenge thing like when it actually happens when billy gets him it's awesome but it's also sort of purposely anticlimactic yes mm-hmm. yeah no you yes. know what i mean yeah. uh, dragging this movie because of that and no. i didn't agree no her and handing of any kind of confrontation like holding you know, putting a gun at somebody was so well done it, she raises every time there was a confrontation. The stakes got higher and higher and higher. Oh, no, that, that guy! And that's from the horror. That's from the horror thing. And and you everything was so it. real. Huh? Everything was so realistic about how long it took to like reload it. Uh, yeah, how yeah. hard it was to. I, aim lo- it. I loved like, that. Yeah. People, also, you know, when like, she crossed the river, I said that gun's not going to fire again. She should do something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there was. Yeah, no, they didn't miss that. They didn't miss that. They nope. didn't miss anything, like because there's no. It was it was all realism in in that respect. Like mm-hmm. even at the end when Billy kills the the slimy guy, like he was trying to reload. That's how long it would take, and he had plenty of time to walk in the room and just you know like there's just no. Him him with us. Do, 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 do. I've I've reloaded a cap and ball revolver and that takes way less time than a musket and it still feels like forever. Like <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, like it's I good. can't Everybody's imagine trying, trying to, kill to do you, that sure. when someone's trying to kill me. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah. It was a good touch that uh, when he was reloading uh, the sergeant there, he actually tore the top off the little uh, yeah. Yeah. cartridge. To and it, it falls out of his mouth when he gets him down into the corner yeah. and he starts to beg. He's yeah. still got it in his mouth yeah. and he starts to say something and it falls out. Mm. And that was like two cuts later. Uh, so yeah. good on the script supervisor. Yeah, exactly. Unlike last week where I dragged the script supervisor. <laughs> did, we get, Jim, did we get your verdict on this? I don't think we got your verdict on this. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I did too. I was, I'm was i a better person for having seen it. I, I was amazed uh, when you were talking about the, the, the rapes are quite graphic and quite uh, unprurient, I guess, mm-hmm. would be the best way to yeah. describe them. But I noticed that they were there was a difference in the styles of raping between the uh, lieutenant and the sergeant. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It was just, it was handled differently. And I and thought how that it was, was depicted- interesting. How it was depicted filmically, or how those two guys they had their own how, little... how they were raping. Yes, <laughs> like the one guy was just like going at it there. Technique. And, yeah. 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 And he was like well, trying then... to kiss her and stuff. He was all yeah. bad in there. The other guy, it's like lean her over the. No, table. because it was just pure. Rage. This is this is also a minor thing, but I just saw Zulu a couple weeks ago, and uh, it reminded me a lot of Zulu. Zulu but actually. the thing is, the uniforms they in this film are so sh- shitty and just thrown together. Like all these guys trying to spiff up, and they're like, in fact, make comment of it the first act, like, yeah, clean yourself up because it's, it's all you're pilled like, up like and crappy shit. looking. Yeah, I know yeah. everyone just <laughs> <laughs> you know. I know, like the, the attention to detail, like like That's Tad that. said, mm-hmm. not only in the not only in the you know continuity and the script is revising, but I mean the sets, the the costuming, the art direction, like yeah. it was before it's so it's so nuanced and feels so real. Yeah, it was. It was really well. Like no, no one's yeah, all those jackets, everyone's clothing was dirty as shit. Mm-hmm. Part of it reminded me of the piano without uh, Harvey Keitel's dick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, <laughs> But again, renewed my faith in there. Which I was thankful for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Scott, what were, you said this renewed your faith in narrative filmmaking? Narrative film and four by three composition. Woo! <laughs> I did. Well, after last week, it was kind of like I was despairing for all movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I was ha- yeah. had such a profound effect on you. Hey, you know, you have to get to the bottom and fly way back to the top yeah. again. So there it is. Yeah, this is a good pick. Really good, good, pick. good pick. Good pick. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready for the next one? Uh, I, I, I'm glad you guys liked it, but I'm also sorry that you had to be subjected to some of that because I know it wasn't easy. 
no, 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 no. I don't mind. Brutal. I don't mind. I don't mind difficult. I don't want to give anything away, but you know, next week is coming. So. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Jared, Jared, Sheila and I were, were totally gripped. What? I missed it. Never mind. You'll know in a second. All so, right. um, oh, what, 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 what are you saying, John? I was just going to say Sheila and I were totally gripped by the thing. So, yeah. thanks for a good pick. It yeah, was a, and, and just if anybody who hasn't seen Baba Duke. I have I actually haven't. not seen Babadook. Watch Babadook. Watch okay, okay, Babadook. I will see Babadook. No problem. Not a horror Babadook. movie Excellent. guy. Would like it. Wait, wait, wait. I I just wrote a whole thing about how I'm not a horror movie guy. Watch fucking Babadook. Okay, Watch okay. Babadook. I read your thing. Also, I read your thing. Also, I, I will you, say this, John. It's deeper than just a horror film as well. You'll see. Right. Yeah. Also, the, 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 it is the, also the, a pucker factor of nine point eight. Okay. Right. Also, the, <laughs> you the, know, the, the last one that was recommended to me with glowing terms by Jared. I thought it was a piece of crap. So, which one was that? That's a the one with um, oh shit, Hereditary. Oh Hereditary. yeah, well it I love it. Wait, 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 wait. No, what? That movie makes no sense. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. All All right. Right. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, well I, didn't I, 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 I didn't see it. John, if I if I may, John, I think you might appreciate the Babadook more. Wow. Okay. No, no. If you didn't like Hereditary. Uh, all right, all right. Well, it's a right. different kind of. It's I a like it follows. Kind of movie. I so like it follows. Yeah, you so, are. It follows. Fans, oh, it so. follows. Fuck. If I, yeah. but the thing is, Babadook is a little more involved than that, right? Yeah, it is. Um, it is. Yeah. All right, let's Babadook move on, is, man. Let's. Wait, 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 quick, 